and welcome. My name is Lexi and today we are talking about cherry blossoms. Not really, but sort of. So this is going to be a chatty get ready with me and we're using items that were inspired by cherry blossoms or, you know, those that actually have cherry blossoms on them like this new Kyoto cherry blossom brush and the brand new Guerlain cherry blossom um, lipstick case. This is absolutely stunning. I mean, look at this. So beautiful. But, uh, you know, I had some requests for a chatty get to know me kind of video along with some makeup questions and so forth. So we're going to try to cover a lot of those in today's video as well. And definitely let me know what you think of this. And thanks so much for tuning in. All right, so we're gonna start off with base products and I'm using the Viseart Eye Primer and the Clay de Peau Brightening Enhancer Veil. So, you know, I got a whole bunch of different questions. I have like makeup related questions that people send in, you know, like questions about like Chantecai and Chanel. And then we also have like questions about, you know, my personal life and so forth. So let's, we're gonna kinda mix them up. <laughs> and some of them aren't gonna make it into today's video, but I did write everything down. So first thing up is what do I do during the day and how do I have a balanced life with kids? So uh, for those of you who don't know, I used to be a biology teacher and I was always like very, very involved with the school. Like I ran like the Science NHS and Science Olympiad with a friend and you know, I was on like a zillion committees. I did the AP classes. So, you know, I was like always at the school. And after I had my second daughter, I had to cut back and I had gone part time. And then once that part time position ran out and I had to go full time, that's when I decided to stay home. And it also coincided with us moving to a new area. So, uh, you know, I've been staying home for the last few years and, uh, you know, my schedule has changed <laughs> drastically. But I think what's really important for me is just making sure that I stay very, very organized. And I have to say, you know, like many people, I thought, you know, maybe I'd have all this free time. <laughs> yes, yeah, you know, maybe I would be bored. But it's actually not true. I feel so much busier <laughs> than I did before. You know, um, let's go through a typical day. So while we talk about my day, I'm gonna apply the Chanel Sublimage Concealer in 02 and the Sisley Cushion in 00C Swan. And I'm gonna use the hook -do, uh brush. So this is a really nice kind of more of a ball shape goat brush. And I think it works really well. Um, so you'll see it in action. So a typical day for me, I, um, you know, I try to get up early to exercise in the mornings, uh, you know, a few times a week. So that means like waking up at like 6, 6.30. My kids usually get up by seven and until the last few months, you know, if they got up, I had to be with them. You know, they weren't really good about leaving me alone to finish what I was doing. Um, you know, they would just, particularly the youngest, you know, my oldest has been better about this for a while now, but yeah, so, you know, that was really hard. I used to have to get up even earlier to exercise just to make sure that I was done before they woke up or I would just never get to really finish. Like, it's not to say they wouldn't let me finish per se, but it wasn't at that same intensity level. So I do that, they get up. They actually start school very late. So their school, we, we go to the bus stop at like nine o'clock. So it's one of the later schools. And since they get up, you know, by seven, they, uh, you know, we've got like downtime and so forth to do. And, you know, we'll pack lunches, eat breakfast, um, you know, all that normal stuff. They usually watch a TV show before school. And if there was any homework or anything, because of course, since they are a later school to get to school, they're also later coming home. So sometimes they're a little too tired for homework and so forth. So we'll do that and then, uh, you know, I take them to school or the bus stop. Unfortunately, our bus has been very inconsistent this year. So, you know, that's usually um, a 30 to 40 minute process recently. And then I come back and I usually check in with YouTube. I try to respond to comments go through all my emails for sales and so forth. That can take a couple of hours. And sometimes I will go ahead and eat lunch. Other times I'm rushing and I film first and then I try to eat something before I pick up the kids. 
And then we have all the after school activities. And so I am taking care of all of that stuff. Um, I'm also helping with, you know, I, I have to say I don't help at the school that much, but I do do things like the brownie troop and I'll help periodically with things. So I'll have like commitments there. And once or twice a week, I try to, you know, have lunch with a friend. So you can see that this brush, you know, it's a really nice brush. It puts the product on really well. You can buff with this. It works well with cheek products as well. So anyway, after school, you know, then we've got all the after school activities, you know, depending on the time of year, we could have something like every day, sometimes twice a day. And I try to limit how many activities they have, but there are two of them. So, you know, they're not necessarily in the same stuff at the same time. So there's a lot of driving. By the time they get back, I have to make dinner. And, you know, sometimes it's really late. Like when my daughter was doing softball in the fall, she had tennis then softball, we'd get back at like eight o'clock and it, it was late. So we were like scrambling. So anyway, make dinner and then we do homework and go to bed. Or on those later nights, they just go to bed and we do homework in the morning. So then once they go to bed, then I, um, you know, I'll edit a video or whatever. And usually by then my husband's home, he, um, you know, he'll either usually end up working a little late on some days or he plays a lot of tennis. So most weekdays he's playing tennis. And so he's not really around to help so much with that stuff, um, which is totally fine. I honestly don't mind. So it's it's not like an issue or anything with us. Now for blush, I'm going to go ahead and use this. Euphoria sent this to me. I, I thought it was really cool. I've tried this already. It's called Chemical Reaction and it is a liquid blush that changes color. So, you know, it looks like just a clear liquid going on, but it's one of those pH adaptive shades. So I'm just going to put a bunch here on my hand and I'm going to use the foundation brush to kind of tap some on. So, wow, <laughs> that was a little bit brighter than I thought. So anyway, that's gonna be like a typical weekday for me. Weekends, you know, we got things like birthday parties, kids activities. Honestly, I have to say, a lot of my time is taken up with kids stuff. And then I really try to fit in YouTube and so forth. And, you know, I will, you know, if I've got time to see a friend or something during the week, you know, we'll try to, you know, schedule something. Um, you know, those, those who are working, we'll schedule something like, on a weekend and that's usually like at night and then I try to again uh, have lunch with somebody like once or twice a week you know and that's kind of like fun time for me sometimes we'll go shopping or something like that and yeah so that's gonna be like a typical day for me now to keep everything pretty well balanced I honestly I have a pretty decent memory um, for like scheduling things. So I have a, a really good internal calendar, but I also write everything in a planner. I like the plum paper planners. Um, honestly, I'm not like a planner person per se. I like the big calendars. <laughs> so I buy like a big empty calendar book essentially and fill that up and I'll use that for everything. Um, and then I try to plan my meals a little bit in advance so I can do meal prep and things like that because, um, you know, I do like to cook from scratch for the most part. So uh, let's move on to highlight, but I just wanted to show you how pretty that blush ends up looking. And yeah, it's not like sticky or tacky or anything. So it feels just like my foundation. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and powder this a little bit. And you know, let's use the, the Kogan Doe. This is the Mayfanshi Brightening Moisture Powder in Brightening Pink. I just left this on, it does come off like this, but just to tell my two colors apart, we have the beige and the pink. So let's go ahead and use the pink one. So for this, I want to show you this new brush. This is one of the, what was this, Coyoto, I think it was. I'll double check in case I'm wrong on that, but this one is the Cherry Blossom and it just came in the mail. Uh, you know, I just washed it last night. And then we've got this one here with the peony. This one here is Pine Squirrel. I have to say, um, some of these feel a little bit pokier than the 
once in the Chocola set from Jikahoto, but it's still very, very soft. So we'll use this today as well, probably. But let's start off with this powder brush with the cherry blossoms. This is beautiful. So we're definitely gonna do kind of a cherry blossom theme. So let's go ahead and just get a little bit of powder on. You can see it picks up easily. And let me bring you in. All right, so here's the powder. And you can see how that applies. Wow, this brush is so silky. I uh, <laughs> really like it and so pretty. All right, so here's one side with the brightening powder and one side without. Let me know what you think, but you know, I think this does give a little bit of brightening. It can be a little kind of whitish, um, you know, depending on your skin tone, but you know, it's, really pretty it works well for my skin tone so uh, this is one that i like you can see it does add a little bit of blurring there and it really just kind of gives you a little bit of a glow without being like shimmery or glittery or anything like that and i think a lot of that is due to the kind of the whiteness there while we're up close let's go ahead we're going to use the pine squirrel peony brush we're going into the Suku 135. This was limited edition. We're gonna just kind of take this blue and purple shade here and brush that softly over the over the blush uh, for a little bit of highlight here. Okay, so I don't feel any pokiness actually using this on my face. I just kind of did like running my hand over it, but it's incredibly soft, so no worries there. So you can see that's just giving like a really faint, a little bit of a bluish kind of glint. I'm taking the Suku L brush into the Kogendo powder. I'm just gonna add a little bit to my lids to kind of like set that primer a little bit. You can see it's adding a little brightness. We're going to go for a light, bright look. Honestly, I was kind of in the mood to use, I don't know if you guys remember the Pink Sakura Dior palette. That was so hard to get last, I think it was last year. Um, but I decided to go ahead and make kind of my own color combination using some Surat shades today. So this is what I'm going to be using on the eyes. And I, these are, you, you can buy these individually. You can purchase a case. I use the back of a Penzi's magnet. But we have this pink shade Ingenue. Let me go ahead and swatch that here. And then we have this silvery shade, which is called Scintillant. You can see that these are really soft, very light. We're kind of going for more of an ethereal look. And then we've got the purple, which is Ravissant. This is one of the more recent shades that I've picked up. It's not a new shade, but it's new to me. And then Vizon, which is one of my most used shades. I use this one a lot, really like this one. So this is gonna be our color story today. And obviously, you know, if you're interested in this color story, you don't have to go with Surat. You can find shades like this. Uh, many different palettes you might already have. All right, so I'm gonna start off with Vizon with the L brush. But while we are um, doing the eyes, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about Chanel. So I am actually waiting for an answer right now still as to whether or not the new team of creative directors did the Chanel spring collection or not. There has been, I've heard mixed rumors. I've heard that nothing that they are doing together will come out until 2024. And I've also heard that they have been working kind of bef way before the announcement for a while on things. So it's possible that they have done that collection. So I'm not really sure which, but I will definitely let you guys know which one it is. As for my thoughts on that collection, I have kind of mixed thoughts because some of the photos, it looks really nice and others, it doesn't look so great. So, you know, I'm not really sure yet. I'm taking the Chikahoto T8 in the Cintillant shade. And yeah, so overall though, I have to say I am excited about the new creative team. I hope that they work well together and they create some exciting things. And, you know, they are, we've got a bunch of different cultural backgrounds from these creative directors. So I hope that means we've got a lot of inclusivity and so forth from them and their collections as well. So I'm very eager to see what they come out with, but I'm very curious to know whether they did spring or not. 
This is the Hakuhodo J5523, and I'm gonna go into the Ravissant, the purple shade here. And another makeup question that I received was about Shantakai. And that was kind of, are they gonna get their act together for this year, is my prediction. And I have to say, honestly, I kind of think not. I think they are, I'm really sorry to say this, but I feel like the quality has gone down recently. Um, not necessarily, that's hard to say. It's just that the new items that were coming out a couple of years ago, every time they came out with a new item, it was, a, I would feel like the texture would be a little bit more innovative. It was incredibly high quality. And even though they were really expensive, it just seemed like you were getting, you know, a really, really great product with beautiful packaging. And now I'm using the pink shade, the ingenue. Um, but now I have to say, I feel like the quality is more mediocre. So I'm not saying it's bad quality per se. It's just not necessarily as good as I would expect for those price points. So that's just a little disappointing to me, but I just don't really see it changing. And I feel like, I don't know. I just feel like they are not doing all that they could be doing to really meet the customer requests. Um, you know, some of my favorite products from them would be things like the Chantecaille 8 Claude Dew Powder, the, um, the Chroma, Chroma Duos, what are they called? The Chroma Lux Duos? That's what I want to call them. I'm not sure if that's right. But you know, those are all like a little bit older products. These newer ones that have come out, yes, they've had some really nice ones. I really liked the Cougar and Jaguar quads. Those were nice, but they're just not special. And with the prices going up, I'm just not feeling like they're worth it. And I still feel like they are just kind of, I don't know, like not necessarily... Like they have an idea and they get like 90% there, but that last 10% is kind of missing in completion. So super, super light eye look, but that's kind of what I'm going for today. So um, we can just add a little bit more of the scintillant with a finger. I'm just gonna add a little bit of this right to the kind of inner corner here. And just, there we go. And then I'm going to add a green eyeliner today. Oh, and I wanted to show you guys this. I'll show you this when I back it out. But my friend Pam had actually suggested this. It's a um, color pencil organizer that I picked up from Amazon. And now I'm putting my eyeliners in here. I'm going to get another one for, uh, you know, like, what's it called? Um, lip pencils. So for eyeliner, I'm going to go in with the Danessa Myricks in Emerald. And... See here, mine is actually loose here in it now, but let me go ahead and show you this. Pretty that is, and the reflect there. Look at that. I think it's like great for a spring color. So anyway, that's kind of my prediction for Shandakai. I think that we're gonna see more of the same this year, and I just feel like it's, um, not going to get better, not necessarily worse, but I feel like this is kind of where they are now. And that's kind of what we're going to be seeing. Uh, now another makeup question that I received was about highlighters. Are highlighters going to be going away anytime soon? I don't think so. I think they're here to stay. I don't think they're going to go away. I think maybe we might see some different trends in highlighting, but I think that they are gonna be like a permanent part of people's makeup arsenal. So that's kind of my opinion on that. Um, but you know, as always, things go in and out of fashion a little bit. So we might see less emphasis on it at some point, but I don't think this year. And I just wanted to show you the pencil case. They do have smaller versions, but I wanted to get a large one. And this is how they fit everything. You know, they just, I mean, they're designed for colored pencils and so forth. So I wasn't sure though, if it would fit my longer ones, like the Victoria Beckham, and it does. So I have a zipper for each one. I've got three sets in here, but you can see how the Victoria Beckham pencils fit in here. Everything fits and, 
you know, I probably have enough for all my lip pencils to go in here, but I just like to keep things separate. So I'll probably get another one in a, a different color case. And I'll leave this linked down below, but honestly, you know, you can find like a wide variety of different brands and versions and so forth on Amazon. And yeah, this bigger one does come with the strap, but I did read that, you know, the smaller ones do not. So that's one of the reasons I got this was because people recommend it having the strap, which is detachable. You can see it's just got the little like hook there. So uh, yeah, thanks so much to Pam for uh, recommending that. It's a great idea and now my kids want them for their color pencils. <laughs> I'm going to take the T8 into the Vison shade from Surat and just put a little bit of this on the lower lash line. Another makeup thing was about red eyeshadow and are we going to see less of it? That brings me up to Lucia Pica at Byredo and I have to say, you know, I was really hoping to see stuff more like innovative stuff from her. Um, so far like that, what's that new palette called that just came out? It looks just like her Chanel palettes, you know, with the reds and the golds and so forth. So I'm hoping though that we'll start seeing her branch out with some more colors, but we'll see. I'm pretty sure the purple echo was not from her. And that was something that had been created prior to is Amaya French leaving, but I'm not a hundred percent on that. If she did do that, I love the color story. Um, but yeah, I mean, not to beat a dead horse there. So then for eyes, I'm using the Ruffer um, Lash Curler and I do two pulses along three lengths of the eyelashes. And then for mascara, I'm going in with my favorite, one of my favorite formulas. This is the Sisley So Stretch. I have it in deep blue right now. To say I don't love this deep blue um, as much as I thought because it's really, it's not deep. <laughs> it's kind of a light blue, so I don't find it to be super, um, I guess not really as noticeable as I would have hoped. And yeah, so um, I did order a brown one just recently. So that will be coming soon. And that is like my favorite, like everyday mascara along with the Surat Noir Lash Tint, which I did put in a request for them to make a brown one. They said you know, it's in consideration. So you want a brown one too from Surat. <laughs> Definitely let them know. Maybe we have a better chance of getting that. So let me go ahead and show you this um, Sicily mascara just so you can see the color. It's kind of more of like a Wedgwood blue kind of shade. So it's a lot lighter than I expected it to be, um, but it is called deep blue. So uh, for brows, I'm still finishing up this Dior Show Onset Brow, and I have shade number one, so just kind of finishing that up. This is almost done, and then I'll be moving back to the Tom Ford Fiber Brow Gel. This is an okay brow gel, though. It's just nothing, like, extraordinary, in my opinion. And, yes, yeah, so let's go back to some more questions. Um, work, kind of covered that. And then hobbies and so forth. Uh, you know, as I mentioned, after the kids go to bed, I usually like edit a video if I have one that day or I'll work on like researching something and so forth. Or my husband and I will like watch a show or something together. So um, I guess watching TV is kind of a hobby. Really only get to do it like late at night. Um, and my passion why I start YouTube and so forth that was actually encouragement from my husband and um, my friend who, uh, you know, my daughter, my youngest was supposed to be going to preschool and then the pandemic hit. So, you know, I had just started the YouTube channel after, you know, COVID hit and then she ended up staying home. But I, you know, I started it just to kind of see how things were going because I had been so used to working that um, I just really liked the structure of a work day. Um, the structure of, you know, having like set things to do. So, uh, you know, having the YouTube channel really helps me maintain that because I have the structure of planning the videos. It's almost like planning lesson plans and doing the research and so forth. Doing a video takes a lot longer than I think the average person <laughs> thinks it does. So, I mean, like filming it can take hours and editing, research, testing things out, doing demos, whenever you have B-roll, you know, all of these things can take a really, really long time to do. So, so um, yeah, I started it and ended up enjoying it. So I kept doing it. 
the reason I did makeup, because my husband really wanted me to do cooking, <laughs> but uh, the reason I did makeup was because that's what I like to watch on YouTube. I like to watch makeup reviews and so forth, but I always had a really hard time finding the swatches of colors I was looking for in particular, or, you know, I, I just wasn't getting the exact information I wanted to make a purchase. And I do like shopping online versus in person a lot of times partly because I would always have to take the children with me and it's just not as enjoyable. So um, that's why I started with makeup, you know, it was kind of to help. I figured it's better off, you're better off having, you know, somebody with a ton of different colors and swatches to share where you can get all of that information versus having a ton of different people buy these things, find out they don't work and either return them where they get trashed or end up trashing them themselves. And it's just like really, you know, wasteful, obviously. And I know we all wanna reduce waste and we wanna save our money and so forth. So that was kind of the inspiration behind my channel. So moving on, let's take a look at our next cherry blossom item. That is this new Guerlain Rouge G lipstick and it is stunning. So I purchased mine from the Guerlain website, but this is also available on Saks at the moment. And you know, we've got our typical Rouge G case with the double mirror inside. If you purchase from guerlain.com, you can get free engraving. And I'm not sure if you can read it on there with the way it reflects, but I chose Dream to Bloom. I don't know why. I was trying to think of something like kind of generic that went with cherry blossoms because, you know, I do anticipate that one day in the future when my children are older, I will be passing on things like this and brushes and so forth to them. So I try, when I do get things engraved, I typically don't use my name for that reason. So this is the lipstick. I mean, look at this. It's really beautiful. I would have to say the pictures online make it look a little bit more bubblegum pink than it does in person. This definitely has like a touch more of like a mauvey purple shade in there. Let's see what it looks like on the skin though. And this is satin. Look at that. And yeah, so it's not really purpley on the skin, but it is going to be like your mid-tone tea rose. Really beautiful. So we've got one swipe and then it's built up next to it. And let's try it on. All right, so this is the color and let's go ahead and blot this real quickly and just see, you know, what it looks like blot it. This is just a microfiber cloth here. You can see you get kind of more of that stain and I just really think that this, you know, would be really nice paired with a slightly lavender tinted lip gloss. Like this is the Tom Ford lip gloss in Love Lust, but some other options would be, well, some other options would be something like the new Dior Holographic Lavender or Suku has a new lip wrapping treatment. That's what they're calling it. Um, but a new one in lavender coming out. I think the lavender one is the limited edition. I'll have to double check that. Pretty sure it is. But you know, just something like that, I think might give it a nice touch. Let's go ahead and take a look. And then I think I'm gonna go back to the actual um, lipstick. Let me bring you in. Yeah, it, I I like it. It just cools it off even a little bit more. And I feel like when the light hits it, you just get a, like a little bit of a glint of, you know, kind of that lavender hue on there. And, you know, to me, that reads spring. So just a swatch here of the Love Less. Unfortunately, this shade was just discontinued though. So it's not something easy to find. You might still be able to find it at certain locations. I know I have still seen it. It was still available at Sephora like a month ago. They cleared that out. But, you know, cosmetic company outlets, you know, the CCO and so forth, they might still have it at certain locations. So I think maybe I'll just actually leave it like that. And if I wanted to pair this with a lip pencil, I would go with, well, I can't find the one I was looking for, but some of the ones <laughs> that I would recommend, actually I haven't tried this one before, but this is the Givenchy Number three, Rose Taffetas. And yeah, that looks like that would be a good match there. I was looking for the Givenchy number eight Parma Silhouette, but I must be sharpening it. <laughs> so this is the Isam um, blushing or blushed 
rather lip pencil and that pinky shade here you can see it's a little bit more nude but i think that's a really great one we've got pat mcgrath starstruck and you can see that's almost a perfect match for it and so if you have that lip liner and you're curious about what color this is that's a great one to look at and then we have the Chanel number 164 in P1. Let's put that here. This is going to be more of a dusty mauve kind of shade, a little bit deeper. But if you want to kind of do more of that ombre lip, this is one that's really great to go around the lips and fill in with this. And then if you want to cool off the color a little bit, this is the Sephora collection in Bellflower, which is new to me. You can see this is be a little bit more purpley and look it like goes so well with the love lust and the Guerlain shade by the way this Guerlain shade is number 63 and it's limited edition just like the case and one last thing I wanted to mention this is the Guerlain fragrance this is an aqua allegoria which is going to be a really light kind of eau de toilette type fragrance this is flora chair Charisia. I'm not sure if I said that correctly, but this is the one that they're re-promoting with this kind of cherry blossom collection. I already have it. It's on new a fragrance. And I love these particularly for summer because they're light and fresh. They're not overpowering. They don't give me a headache or anything like that. But this is going to be kind of a soft, fresh cherry blossom kind of scent. And it's just, yeah, it, I, I put it on this side just because I have the swatches, but it's got a little, you can smell a little bit of green notes and so forth, but it's just going to be very light. Now, the reason I want to mention this is Guerlain has also just come out with a Forte version, a strong version of the Aqua Allegoria fragrances. I don't know if they have them for all fragrances yet, but it's supposed to be a, a more intense version of those. So I just started trying some samples. My favorite of these is the Mandarin Basilic. And so I have a little sample of that one to kind of try and compare with the strong or the Forte version versus the regular version. So, so that's basically it. I did have just one last question I wanted to address and that was when did my love for makeup begin? I have to say I've always loved like color and makeup and so forth. I loved coloring as a child and that's kind of where it started. Um, my mom always tells a story about how when I was um, six, you know, I was in first grade I went to a private school, so I wasn't allowed to wear makeup there anyway, but apparently I kept making us late to school every day because I was putting on makeup and my mom had to get my teacher to tell me that wasn't allowed. But um, yeah, it was just something that I always liked and that was like the little Tinkerbell makeup and so forth and I've always been very um, kind of conscientious with keeping it clean and not letting other people use my makeup. So uh, it's just kind of always carried through, but I just, uh, you know, didn't really wear it in public until I was essentially a grown up. but I, it was something I always played with at home and so forth. And the reason I didn't wear it in public wasn't so much like a rule or anything. Like once I turned 13, I was allowed to wear, you know, light makeup and stuff outside, but my friends didn't. So I just always felt a little self-conscious because I was the only one. So, I mean, that was the main reason, but yeah, it's something that I've always enjoyed. And my youngest daughter, you know, is definitely following in those footsteps. She loves makeup and uh, tries to play with it every day after school. So uh, yeah, it's definitely something well loved here. So thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful. And, you know, I'd love to know your thoughts on the products that we use today. And definitely let me know if you enjoyed kind of this chatty get ready with me. I don't do these things very often, um, but, you know, let me know if that's something you'd like to see more of or not really. <laughs> so uh, thanks so much for tuning in and I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll see you very soon.